So today I watched my way through uh, most of the Jean Rouge collection that we have on Filmstruck. Um, I left two because one of them was co-directed by somebody else and one of them was, um, I think, not a documentary. Although now I realize it might have been, but I'll get to those other two. It's fine. These ones were definitely straight up documentaries. This first one was called Mammy Water. It's from 1953. And um, the thing to know about Jean Rouge is he was French, but he made most of his films in Africa and really um, was one of the founding sort of documentarians to create the style now known as cinema verite, where it doesn't quite feel like a documentary. But some of his earlier films felt a little bit more like what you think of when you think of a documentary. So Mammy Water is one of the ones that's not quite in cinema verite yet. It feels a little more traditional. It is about a small village that um, has had a bad season, and so they are doing a, ce a ceremony to honor Mammy Wa Water and get their um, catch renewed. And the book, it's 20 minutes, and it just follows this uh, tribe as they um, do this um, ceremony. And it's very much an ethnographical documentary. Um, beautifully shot in Technicolor, gorgeous cinematography. Uh, the next film was called The Mad Masters, or Les Maîtres Fous, and it's about um, a, a, tr a tribe or subgroup, I couldn't quite figure that out, I think it's a subgroup within a tribe called the Ho Hoka, that um, do a ceremony, they're doing a ceremony, um, so the Hoka were a, a group of sort of within this one tribe in northern Africa that um, attempted to deal with the trauma of being colonized by basically blaming it on uh, possession. And the, the film follows them through one of their rituals and, and shows r basically ritual possession. And it's terrifying um, and fascinating. And this one is from 1955, and it's about 40 minutes long. And again in the ethnographical documentary vein. The next film, 1958, from 1958, Moi, Moi Un Noir, very much was cinema verite and follows a group of young Nigerian immigrants who leave uh, Nigeria for better lives in the Ivory Coast. And However, they are finding, starting a new life in the Ivory Coast, which was very, um, much a French colony, not colony. Um, there were there was part of the French Empire. Um, they're finding the modernization of of the tribes there uh, very different from where they where they grew up and the um, sort of uh, traditions in which they were raised. And they're but they're enjoying the modern modern life, and so they're having conflict with internal conflict with their um, Upbringing, upbringings and this new surroundings around them. Meanwhile, also living in not the best circumstances because, as we well know, often um, immigrants seeking better lives are, are treated terribly in other countries. Um, the next film was from 1961. I really liked this one. This one might be my favorite of the group. It's called The Human Pyramid or La Pyramide Humaine. And it followed a group of students in the um, Ivory Coast as they discuss um, race relations and post-colonialism. And it's a mixture of white students and black students. And um, there is a, it, there's, they, there's sometimes shot with them within a group and sometimes it's them outside the group. And you, you really see, like, number one, the one facet of the group that refuses to really listen to everyone else is always the white men. It's really shocking. Um, it's not shocking at all. And uh, there there was one moment in it where one of the women is so, so succinctly describes why um, places like South Africa and America have such terrible um, rooted feelings toward black people. Um, whether they remember this or not. Uh, unfortunately, it comes from foundations that have been forgotten because as a society and as a world, we tend to forget our history and where we came from. 
And so we forget the racist roots of these colonies. Um, and it's the, it tells the story of Ham, who was the son of Noah, and that the African civilizations, according to the um, Bible, were the descendant of, descendants of Ham and a cursed race. I was like, wow, this is succinct, really good. Oh my God. And there's a, a debate about why, um, about how uh, a lot of these colonies that were still, they didn't have independence yet, were still supported um, or represented at the UN by France. And so these black students would want their country to stand against South Africa and apartheid, but the French are that represent them, you know, have some issues because if they take, you know, a stance, then other countries are have will have the right to come in and talk about Algeria, and this was in the middle of the Algerian War, and so it's like, you know, world politics are really complicated, and it's a bunch of teenagers discussing the complications of world politics, the intersection of race and romance and 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 life, and it's just really fascinating, and I, I really enjoyed this one. Um, much more than all the others, to be honest. The next one was the hardest one to watch. This is 1966. This is La Chasse ou le Lion à l'Arc, also known as The Lion Hunters. And it is exactly as it sounds. It is. Um, it follows over the course of several years, um, or it was filmed over the course of several, year, several years, as a group of West African hunters ritually hunt and track down a pride of lions who've been attacking their cattle. Now, the bits with the cattle and the way that the people feel about their cattle is lovely. And the photography is lovely. Watching them hunt and kill lions, regardless of why, really difficult to watch. Really, really difficult to watch. And then on top of that, the narration is really boring. Like, like white toast boring. It is so boring. And so you have this like horrible graphic stuff happening and this boring narration and I just I could not get into this at all. It's I'm sure it documented something very important in terms of the ethnographic history of Africa, but it made me uncomfortable and it was boring. So there you have it. The next two films were sort of a series. Um, I think at one point they were a combined film. Now they're and they became two films. One is called Jaguar, it's from 1968, and one is called Little by Little from 1970. And it follows the same group of three men who start, um, who leave Niger and come to, so Niger, not Nigeria, Niger, and come to Ghana, and they set up an import-export business. In the first one, it follows them as they're setting up their business, and it explains, um, really good scene where he's explaining what a jaguar is and, and is, you know, a guy who is like the top, top man down the street with all the swagger. Um, and it's, it's interesting and, and, uh, uh, definitely an incisive look at, um, Western capital, capitalist ideas coming into and changing the traditional ways in which, um, Africa was. And, I'm not necessarily sure that um, it's the most accurate depiction of this because Roosh definitely um, editorializes a little bit and he definitely has picked some some very much characters to uh, follow. The next film follows them as they go to France, do some shenanigans, and then wind up back in um, Ghana. And the bits with them in France, both uh, talking with, white French people as well as other Africans in France. It's really fascinating. I quite liked it. Um, although bits of both these films feel a little paternalistic and a little, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like they set up the characters to seem a little more ridiculous than they should, uh, to bring comedy out. And, and that's, that has not aged well. Um, but there are some moments towards the end that I found very revelatory where the men are discussing the fact that they're being called capitalists and by people in, in Africa as a, as a pejorative. And they're like, actually, you know, we are capitalists and what we do, what we do under capitalism is basically robbery. So they're, they're right. And then they just stroll off and continue what they're doing. And so it's definitely a, a very, um, 
fiery look at the way in which capitalism turns people into, um, turns off the empathy of, of, of people uh, and it goes against the way in which society should really be. But it doesn't judge it because they don't judge it. And so that's a, that's kind of fascinating. Um, yeah, so these were the Jean, the Jean Rouge films. I have two more I'm going to watch maybe tomorrow. Um, but these, again, were Mammy Water, the Les Mesclas Fou, Moi en Noir, La Pyramide Humaine, uh, La Chasse au Lion à l'Arc, Jaguar, and Petite à Petite. And you can still watch them on Filmstruck for a hot minute. It looks like most of them are available to rent on Amazon as well if you want to pay $4 per film. Um, you can could have saved a lot of money and just been on Filmstruck. Anyway, Jean Rouge, he's interesting. 